Hi guys, this lesson is on section 6.4, which is the standard form. So again, if you remember the three forms of linear equations, we had slope-intercept, which is y equals mx plus b. The second form is standard form, which is ax plus by equals c. And then the third one is point-slope. Today we're doing ax plus by equals c. There's two rules to standard forms, a, b, and c. So the number in front of the x, the number in front of the y, and the number in front of the... I'm sorry, after the equal sign, they have to be integers, which means if they're fractions, you have to multiply them by the denominator to make them into integers. So they cannot be fractions or decimals. And the second rule, A must be positive. In some books, it doesn't have to be, but if you make it positive, it doesn't matter what book you're dealing with, you're going to be correct and whatever teachers want. If you make it positive, whether they want it positive or not, at least you'll be correct. Okay, so again, ax plus by equals c is your standard form. Okay, here's an equation in standard form, 3x plus 4 equals 12, and it'll tell you find the x and y intercepts. Before I do that, let me explain the x and y intercepts real quick. The x intercept is where it crosses the x axis. So you can see I have three dots here. And on the three dots, I put the coordinates, negative 3, comma 0, 0, comma 0, 2, comma 0. If you notice, they have the zeros in common. So for an x-intercept, your y or your y-coordinate is going to equal to zero. For your y-intercept, you can see I have three points crossing the y-axis, zero comma two, zero comma zero, zero comma negative two. You notice that the x's are zero. So for the y-intercept, your x-coordinate is zero which makes sense because it's on the y-axis. And for the x-intercept, the y is 0, and that's on the x-axis. So knowing this, when I find the x and y-intercepts, for my x-intercept, I know y is going to equal to 0. Okay? If I put a 0 into here, 4 times 0 is going to be 0. Okay, so instead of doing that, here's a shortcut that you can do. For the x-intercept, you can actually just cover up the y, make it 0, and what you're left with is 3x is equal to 12. So when you solve for the x-intercept, you're just solving for the x, but you can drop off the y. Okay. When I divide by 3, I get x is equal to 4. That is my x-intercept, except what I would like you to do is write it into coordinate form. If the x is 4, this one goes into the x, and then the y is 0, goes into the y, and I want you to put it in coordinate form. Okay. Same thing for the y-intercept. If x is 0, I can just cover this up because 3 times 0 is 0. Notice I'm leaving the sign in front of it because if it's a negative, it will make a difference. But since it's a positive, it doesn't make a difference here, so I just go 4y is equal to 12, divide both sides by 4, y is equal to 3. That is my y-intercept, but it, again, I want you to put it into coordinates. So if x is 0, that goes here, and the y is 3 goes into here. So my answer would be 4, 0, and 0, 3. Okay? That's how you find the x and y intercepts. We're going to do some more, so if you, don't, if you didn't get it, don't worry. So here is my next part. Graph it using, graph these equations, two equations, using the x and y intercepts. If you remember on the slope intercept form, we needed to use three points, the y-intercept, remember we did the y-intercept, and then we went to the left one and to the right one, so you had three points, three points. This one we're gonna use, just use two points, your x-intercept and your y-intercept, and that's all you're gonna need. Okay, so find the x and y-intercept. So same thing, on the x-intercept, I'm gonna cover up the y, and I get four x is equal to 12, so I'm gonna solve it, four x is equal to 12, divide by four, x is equal to three, so that is 3 comma 0. For the y-intercept, I cover up the 4x and I'm left with, and again, that's why I left the sign, negative 6y is equal to 12. So when I divide by a negative 6, I get y is equal to negative 2. And when I do my coordinates, it's 0 comma negative 2. The reason I have you put it into coordinate form is a lot of times, this is a mistake people make, if they left it as x equals 3, y equals negative 2, what they do is they go 1, 2, 3, negative 2, and they put a dot right here. And that's all they put. If you remember, standard form is a linear equation. You should get a line. If you just get a dot, you're wrong. 
And even though I say this and I do this, people are still going to do this every year because people aren't turning on their volume. Okay, so plot this point 3 comma 0, plot this point 0 comma negative 2, draw your line, and that's it. That's all you have to do. Just two points, 1, 2, and you're done. Okay, so here's another example. 2x minus 5y equals negative 10. So what I need to do, 2x is equal to negative 10. When I divide by 2, x is equal to negative 5 negative 5 comma 0. Okay. For the y-intercept, negative 5y is equal to negative 10. Divide both sides by negative 5. y is going to equal to 2, 0 comma positive 2. So when I come to graph it, I got negative 5 comma 0 is over here. 0 comma 2 is going to be over here. And I'm going to graph it going this way. So again, just two dots. I'm going to change the light so you can see it better so there's no glare. So 0, 2, and negative 5, 0. Um, your homework check, number one, is going to be right here. And I have it for you. What I'd like you to do is find the x and y intercepts for 2x minus 6y equals 18. Okay, so homework check number one, find the x and y intercepts, just like we did up here, but you don't need to graph it. Okay, so that's homework check number one. Okay, the next section, horizontal and vertical lines. Why they threw it into this standard form, I'm not sure, um, but here it is. If you remember horizontal lines, they go sideways like this. The slope, do you remember what type of slope? We had four types of slope. We had positive, we had negative, we had, and what was this one, if you remember? It was zero. Good. So the slope of this horizontal line is zero. That's your zero. And then if you remember this line, that one was, your vertical was your undefined slope. Okay? So just a quick one if you remember that. So if they give you this equation, y equals 4, and they told you to graph it, Another way to write it, if m is 0, you can rewrite it into slope-intercept as y equals 0x plus 4. So your y-intercept is 4, and your slope is 0, so it just goes across like that. It's a horizontal line. The easiest way I would tell you to do it, if they give you y is equal to negative 2, what I would do is graph y equals negative 2, graph that here, and then you can see it's not going to be on the line itself, so it's got to be a line going this way. Okay. So if I were you, I'd just graph it that way. Just graph the dot, graph this dot y equals negative 2, and then you can see it's going to be a horizontal line. On this case here, x equals negative 2, there's no y-intercept. So there's no y in the, in the equation. I would, if I were you, again, just graph x is equal to 2, graph it right on x is equal to 2, and you can see it's not going to go this way because not, you're not going to draw it on the axis itself. So you just draw this line, and it's a vertical line going that way. Okay. So this is your x equals 2 line. And just so you can kind of see it over here, this is your y equals 4 line. You can see how they go. If I had x is equal to ne negative 1, same thing. Graph it on the negative 1 and graph your vertical line. If you ended up with x is equal to 0, now we would have a, a trippy problem. Not a trippy problem, but just an issue. Okay, Because when you graph it here on the dot, you're not sure whether you go left to right or up and down. That's where you need to know if x is 0, it's a vertical line, and you would just draw it on the line itself like that. Okay, So x is equal to 0 is on the y-axis. Same thing for the y. If y is equal to 0, it would be on the x-axis. Okay, so that's horizontal and vertical lines. Here's one of the more challenging parts of this section. Putting an equation from slope-intercept into standard form. And the way you do that is you need to rearrange it to ax 
plus by equals c, and then change them into integers. So you can see I have the x on this side of the ecosign. I need it to I need it to get to the left side of the ecosign. So what I do is I just minus 4x from both sides. If I minus 4x from both sides, that's gone there. I get negative 4x plus y is equal to 7. And now I have it in order, but now I need to do, are the integers? Yes. Rule number two, I need to change this to a positive. So all I do is I can divide every one of these by a negative one, and that would do it. Or I could multiply everything by a negative one. But then I would get 4x minus y is equal to negative 7. And I do my two checks. Are they all integers? Yes, 4, negative 1, negative 7. There's invisible 1 there, yeah? And is it all integers? Yes. So, I'm sorry, is a positive? Yes, it's a positive 4. My two rules are complete. That is standard form. Okay. Here's another simple one. I need, again, to move the x over. So I'm going to minus half x from both sides, and I'm going to get negative half x plus y is equal to 3. Now I need to get rid of the fraction and the negative. So there's a couple of things I could do. I could just divide everything by negative first, or I could multiply everything. I can, what I can do now is multiply both sides by the reciprocal of this fraction. Okay. When I distribute this in, this just becomes x. Negative 2 times y is minus 2y is equal to 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Okay. So that's one way of doing it. If you wanted to multiply by 2 first and then divide everything by a negative 1, you could do that as well. But you want to check, are they all fractions? Yes, a is 1. B is negative, so A is 1, B would be negative 2, and C would be negative 6 if they asked you for that. In this case, A was 4, B would be negative 1, and C would be negative 7. Okay, that's how you identify those. I know that was kind of tricky, so I got one more here that's a little harder for you, and but we'll work through it together. So what, again, what I want to do is plus 2 thirds x to both sides. So I'm going to get 2 thirds x plus y is equal to 1 over 6. Now I have a problem because I have a 3 here and a 6 here. So I can actually do a couple of things. I could change them to common denominators, or I could just get rid of 1 first and see what I need to do. Um, if I were you, I just multiply everything by the 3 first okay, to get rid of this. This becomes 6 over 3, which is 2x plus 3y, don't forget to distribute it, okay. equals to 3 over 6 is 1 half. Okay, so I got rid of this fraction, but I didn't get rid of this fraction because it's still a fraction. So now what I need to do is multiply everything by this one, by the 2. So now when I distribute it back in, I would get 4x plus 6y is equal to 1. Now I have all integers, a is 4, B is 6, C is 1, and A is positive as well. Okay. A shortcut you could have done, and some people might have saw it, instead of multiplying by 3 and then by 2, I could multiply by the um, least common multiple of 3 and 6, which is 6. So if I just multiplied it by 6 off the bat, I would have came up with this answer here. Okay. So again, rearrange it first, put the X and the Y on the left-hand side of the equal sign, and then get rid of the fractions. Okay, one last one is a real-world problem. So if Kahlua Pay costs $5 a pound, Lala costs $6 a pound, you have $300 to spend, write an equation in standard form to show how much of each you can buy. In this case, if this is, we saw, we make, um, sorry, I'll color code it. Kahlua Pay will be K, Lala will be L. So we had, um, Defining our variables, we could say 5k plus 6l, so 5 times the number of kalua pig or pounds, plus 6 times the pounds of lao lao is equal to $300. It's, that's going to be a pretty simple equation when you come to it. 
just define your two variables let them know or I don't if it says to define it define it add them together equals to whatever you have to spend okay so you can see 5k plus 6l equals 300 pretty simple um, you only have one homework check actually I'll do another homework check um, the last homework check number two is going to be find the find the x and y intercepts of this or the k and the l intercepts so find k and l intercepts of this equation okay should be pretty simple i hope this helps and i'll talk to you later